हेलो एवरीवन सो कंटिन्यूइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दिस टॉपिक ऑफ पोस्ट टी यू आर पी अकरेंस ऑफ ऑब्सट्रक्टिव लो यूनिट रैक्ट सिम्टम्स आफ्टर टी यू आर पी इन दिस वीडियो आई विल टेल यू दैट इफ यू हैव डायग्नोज अ पेशेंट टू हैव पोस्ट यू आर पी ब्लड एंड स्टेनोसिस हाउ शुड यू ट्रीट दिस आई टोल्ड यू there are many clinical variants for example there may be a patient of bladderneck stenosis alone or there may be a patient who has bladderneck stenosis along with stricture down below in the urethral as in this case there may be a patient who has bladderneck stenosis as well as significant amount of residual prostate so both the problems Now here is a video of a patient where you can see residual apical lobes and the bladder neck, which is not nicely open. Now this is a case who is evolving into bladder neck stenosis, and you do not know what will happen in future. He may develop more stenosis in future. If I were to give you a small uh, algorithm of managing these patients. if the patient has a short segment vertically the vertical height is more like a septum of bladder neck stenosis and the degree of contracture process is very superficial or else on the other side if the patient has a vertically long segment of stenosis and the degree of fibrotic process is very deep and more so you isolate these patient into this group the later group which is more serious it requires transurethral incision under anesthesia and if the patient has residual apical tissue also along with the incision do a repeat transurethral resection of residual prostate but if the patient has the simpler variety short segment diaphanous membrane like bladder stenosis you and the patient has come very early you can do a fluoroscopic dilatation of that narrow bladder neck over a guide wire under local anesthesia or you can do a cystoscopic dilatation as i showed you in my previous lecture after cystoscopic dilatation these patient should be asked to do a self dilatation and thus they can maintain their blood outlet normally if the patient fails he goes for transurethral incision or whatever the case requires now let me show you a fluoroscopic video of a patient who had a very fine thin septum like blood neck stenosis and in this patient we have put in a guide wire to the urethra and to the bladder neck into the bladder and then this is the contrast which is being injected you will appreciate that narrow area of stenosis in the bladder neck just below that the contrast is showing you dilated prostatic urethra and over the wire you advance this single stage dilator in some of my videos on youtube i have shown you the use of this one stage uh urethral dilator which has been developed by me you can use any facial dilator to do this job the entire process is done under fluoroscopic control under local anesthesia after that patient will void normally you can do a dilatation to a greater degree by following wider dilators of 20 french or 22 french to make the caliber of bladder neck even bigger this patient has again post urp bladder outer obstructive symptoms and as you put your scope inside you will notice estenos bladder neck here and this is i would say not a very bad case of bladder neck stenosis it's a thinner septum right as you put your scope in this gets dilated by the scope so look at the thin edges right so this is a simple case of bladder neck stenosis with not much of fibrotic process once dilated patients do fine here is another case of bladder neck stenosis let's let's see what is there in the patient this is very montanum and as you go close to bladder neck you notice a narrow bladder neck 
Look at the location of the bladder neck, narrow bladder neck. It's towards the 12 o'clock of endoscopic vision. And then you are trying to put pressure with the sheath to enter the bladder. And gradually, gradually you, you go inside the bladder. The bladder is clean. It shows you some trabeculations which will happen in these patients. And then as you come out, you will see the effect of dilatation on the bladder neck. You will notice some whitish scar. Now this patient will recur with the bladder neck stenosis. The cystoscopic dilatation will not be enough. You can buy time with it, but subsequently he will require a regular bladder neck incision. Now this is another patient who has a scarred bladder neck. The bladder neck hole is anteriorly located. If you have doubt, you can confirm this by passing a guide wear. But here, the anterior hole is the bladder neck. You, you put the urethral catheter in that narrow bladder neck and then you can advance the scope over the urethral catheter and examine the bladder form inside. Now, this step is necessary to allow the introduction of the receptoscope sheath through this bladder neck. And then you remove the guide wire and urethral catheter and place your uh, receptoscopic system inside it. It is important to assess the location of uretic orifices before you begin incision of the stenosis bladder neck. And now you cut at uh, 7 o'clock by Collins knife. Some people feel laser is more useful here, but I find Collins knives very quick. And uh, if you have a right setting of your cutting currents, it does not induce excessive fibrosis. So you have to make deep incisions on the seven o'clock location at one side and having made that sufficiently deep, having made the incision on one side, you move to the incision on the other side a similar procedure is done at a 5 o'clock location. So you are creating bilateral two trenches and the fibrotic ring is cut at two places and most patients do well after this operation. There is some recurrence rate but it's uh, in my view it's uh, fairly uncommon. So this is the appearance of bladder neck after bilateral bladder neck incision. Bring the incision by the side of Veru Montanum on both sides. So that's the final picture of bilateral incision of the blood neck stenosis and also the residual prostate. Now here the other patient, there's some small structure in the urethra which is soft structure and easily dilated with the sheath. This is Veru Montanum and you see more upwards into prostatic urethra. It's sometimes difficult to locate the blood neck stenosis, right? So that's where it is, an anteriorly located contractured bladder neck. You can enter the bladder with gentle force and examine. So appreciate the degree of fibrotic process in this patient. And on transrectal ultrasound, this patient had reasonable residual prostate as well. First, you begin making bladder neck incisions as you would do for any patient of bladder neck stenosis. So we did on him one bladder neck incision on at 7 o'clock. You will appreciate that as you are cutting 
this area you will see adenomatous tissue prostate on either side of your incision so this is significant amount of residual prostate an incision alone uh, may not be sufficient uh, job to relieve the blood outflow obstruction so either incision made on the five o'clock location here also at the edges of the incision you notice that there is a reasonable amount of residual prostatic tissue so these are operators subjective assessment so now you take a regular septoscope loop and it is better to resect whatever residual prostate tissue you are seeing below the bladder neck and that was what was done in this patient gradually gradually you resect the prostate below the bladder neck and give the patient a wide open bladder outlet this is the resected tissue inside the bladder so friends if you encounter a simple case of bladder neck stenosis you should try to do a endoscopic treatment right either a bladder neck incision you can do bni with cold knife hot knife laser whatever is your choice uh, some people recommend putting mitomycin c after blood neck incision inside the bladder or some people even recommend injecting trams in alone at the area of the bladder neck this in their view minimizes the recurrence of another episode of bladder neck stenosis but this is in clinical practice uncommon if the patient recurs you can do of course either bear blood neck incision but then if the patient keeps recurring again and again you may have to resort to open reconstruction and uh, there are some patients who have total complete occlusion as i showed you in some of the pictures earlier these patients may require uh, open reconstruction of bladder neck but uh, uh, fortunately this kind of occurrence is very very uncommon so thank you very much for your patient watching this video and listening to my views on management of bladder neck stenosis after the TURP. In case you have any questions or comments, you can write on my email or look at my website, the academy of urology. Thank you very much.